Hello fellow travelers, and welcome to another episode of in-depth boss guide series, where we take a closer look at the VAT's major threats. I'm too lazy to be awesome, and this time we are learning about Rodea of Loch, the Oceanid of Chinse. Oceanid has a unique fight mechanic. The boss is immune during the fight, and instead of fighting it directly, we'll have to fight Hydra Mimics that it summons. Every time there will be 5 waves of random Mimic groups in total, and in order to defeat the boss, you'll have to deal with them all. The first two waves consist of just one Mimic group each, but after that, two groups of Mimics will be summoned for each wave. If you can't deal with the wave in 2 minutes, boss rages out and summons a whirlpool under your character which deals a lot of damage, acting basically as a DPS check. You can't avoid this damage, but it's plenty of time for a wave, so normally it shouldn't be a problem. In addition to that, apparently giving you small arena surrounded by water isn't enough, so Oceanid also sinks two parts of arena twice during the fight, further limiting available space for you. However, Mimics can walk on the water freely, which sometimes might give you a hard time reaching them. But at least they can't be spawned on sunken tiles. Mimics are made of Hydro, which makes them immune to it, but instead they grant you free procs for Hydro-related reactions on hit. Every Mimic type has its own features and behavior, so let's learn how to fight each of them. There are 8 types of Mimics which can be divided into 4 groups. First group consists of boars and ferrets, the furry guys, because they have fur of course. Boars always run into you charging from afar, or just ramming you if you stay close. It's easy to avoid both by dashing to the side. Ferrets can either jump on you with a slam, or hit you with their tail sweep. Both attacks are very quick, but have a short charging animation beforehand, so you have to pay attention to them to dash away in time. Boars and ferrets also rapidly regenerate their health, which makes them quite durable. They are weak to pyro damage and hitting them with pyro attacks also disables their passive region for several seconds, so bringing pyro really helps, especially if your damage is low. They can be spawned only on a central tile, and they always spawn in pairs. Second group includes flying birds, cranes and raptors. Cranes stand far away and periodically send torrential waves at you. The waves are quite slow and move in a straight line, so just be aware of them and you should have enough time to react and dash away. They also perform a backstep if you come close, and sometimes they might get out of the arena, creating problems for melee characters. You can run far away to make them come closer if it happens. Raptors, on the other hand, follow you and perform quick dives. They have a short charging animation, but it's still pretty hard to avoid this attack due to how fast it is. Raptors always stay in the air, and since you can't place climbable constructs on the arena to reach them with melee characters, you have to bring ranged characters to deal with them quickly. Otherwise, they become a massive problem. These mimics deal quite a lot of damage, but luckily they don't have a lot of HP, making them a great target to focus first. They are weak to electro damage, so they won't stand a chance against decent ranged electro characters. They can be spawned only on the corner tiles, and they always spawn in threes. Third group is the annoying bunch – crabs and mallards. Crabs walk sideways spitting water bubbles at you. Their rotation capabilities are limited, so you can run away from them. They also do short breaks every few seconds, during which you can safely approach them. Mallards don't attack you directly, and instead they channel a small vortex around them and just follow you to deal damage with it. Both mimics deal low damage, but it can stack up very quickly. They are really hard to deal with using melee characters, but they can be easily countered with cryo. It not only deals additional damage, but also freezes them, preventing crabs from speeding and running away and completely disabling mallards' vortex. Without Cryo, they become much scarier if you don't have enough damage to kill them quickly. 
They can be spawned only on the central tile and they always spawn in pairs. Last group is frogs and finches, the big dudes. Frogs can either send torrential waves at you and just like with cranes, you can simply dash away from them. Or they can perform a high leap dealing damage in a big area. It's hard to run away from the area, but you can avoid it with dashing iframes. Finches have the same high leap attack and also a small leap on the place. This small leap can't be dodged with iframes, but its area is much smaller, so just keep your distance and dash away instead. In addition to that, both mimics will transform into a bomb after dying, dealing damage in a huge area. The area is so big that it's very hard to run away from it. The better way to avoid it is to use water around the arena. Bomb explosion only deals damage above the surface, and when you jump into water, your character dives for a couple of seconds, allowing you to avoid it. You can also increase the dive time using plunging attacks. My personal way to handle the timing is to count 1, 2, 3, jump, after killing one of the big dudes. Works like a charm. These mimics have a lot of HP and deal decent damage, but fortunately their attacks are not that hard to avoid with proper movement. They are weak to Geo and if you can avoid their attacks consistently, they don't pose much of a threat. They can be spawned only on the middle side tiles and just a single mimic spawns every time. For each wave only one mimic from a group can be spawned, so you won't see two sets of birds spawning together, as well as you won't see crabs together with boars for example because they use the same tile. Knowing this, you can predict which mimic group you'll have to deal with even before they spawn and proceed to the most dangerous one to deal with it ASAP. I suggest to prioritize birds, since they are easy to kill, then tend to whatever spawns in the central tile and leave the big dudes for the end to safely avoid their final explosion with a dive without interruption. Since you fight multiple enemies at once, it might be hard to keep track of them all during the fight, but once you learn how to deal with every mimic type and focus on one group at a time, the fight becomes trivial if you prepare for it accordingly. How? Let's take a look. As we've learned, ideally you need to bring four elements to gain advantage against each group of mimics. But to be honest, Geo is easily replaceable since big dudes don't require it to be countered. There's a defensive side of Geo as well, because it can constantly produce Hydro Shards from Crystallize, so you can consider it if you struggle to avoid damage. But keep in mind that you can't place constructs on the arena, so you'll have to actively use Geo characters for that, which means they should be somewhat decently built. Also, you don't really need an Electro character, because to deal with birds, you just need ranged character. But I highly recommend to use Electro anyway, because it's very powerful. Electro charged deals damage to enemies with wet status around, and since you mostly fight packs of Hydro enemies, it works great. Pyro characters are extremely good no matter what, due to how Vaporize work. In addition to buffed damage, they also help you to deal with boars and ferrets much faster, so they should definitely be on your team for this fight. Cryo could be considered as purely defensive, but you'd still better bring it if you don't have enough DPS to deal with the annoying bunch straight away. And even besides that, the ability to prevent enemies from fighting back seems pretty good, doesn't it? As for other elements, you obviously don't want to bring Hydro because Mimics are immune to it, and Animal will be much worse because you can't benefit neither from Swirls nor from Crowd Control, which most of Animal characters are good at. Physical damage output is unaffected, but there are just much better options. When it comes to weapons, having at least one ranged character is a must, otherwise Raptors become a real pain. Claymore wielding characters work worse here, because their attacks will trigger shatter on frozen enemies and unfreeze them, and despite dealing more damage with it, it's still much better to keep enemies frozen, so stick to swords or polearms for this fight instead if you prefer melee combat. 
although ranged characters still have an advantage because of their reach. There are two great characters for this fight I want to point out. First one is Lisa. Charged version of her skill deals a lot of damage in a big area even without any conductive stacks, but it has long charging time as a downside. You can determine where and which enemies are going to spawn in advance and by the time they become active you can already fully charge her skill. With a little bit of investment in her damage, this allows you to simply annihilate the entire bird trio in a few seconds, which often removes most of the wave right away, making fight a lot easier. Second amazing character for this fight is Ayaka. Her constant frequent cryo application allows her to keep enemies permanently frozen. This also makes both parts of a 4-piece Blizzard Strayer set bonus always active, significantly increasing her damage. So basically, she deals increased damage and enemies can't fight back. There is one last thing to mention here. During the fight Ocean it takes some time to sink a couple of tiles. You don't have anything to do meanwhile, so if you take a lot of damage fighting mimics, you can use this time to heal your characters with passively healing abilities like skills of Barbara or Kokomi for example. Even though you can't deal damage with them during the fight, this makes them viable picks if you really need more healing between the waves, although I still think that the best defense is a good offense. With that in mind, you can make a team to withstand anything that Oceanic can throw at you. The fight becomes much easier if you come prepared, so make sure that you have an answer to every mimic type and you'll be fine. Now there's just one thing left to take a look at. There are two achievements related to Oceanic that you can earn, and none of them really worth discussing. You'll get the first one naturally after several fights. And to get the second one, you can either get lucky and have a fight without a single frog or finch spawning, or just avoid the explosions like I explained earlier. It's a good thing to do anyway to avoid damage, so again, you'll get it naturally if you just follow the tips. And that's all I have for you this time, fellow travelers. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you'll have a nice day and I'll see you in the next one.